everyone. Welcome to the Hobby Streakers, episode 23. My name is JG, co-host Liam. Uh, we are the Hobby Streakers. Hobby Streak is doing 30 minutes of hobby every night for the longest streak possible. Today, Liam is on... You didn't put it. Uh, 1,634. And... All right. Well, big number. So, <laughs> and today I am on four. This, this week, eight. Liam is on large number here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Insert large number. I Insert 1,600 something something. Because <laughs> that's pretty much what you are. Um, Not much new uh yeah it's so i went to no i went to uh the eye doctor today and told me that i needed to uh, increase my glasses so yay awesome it's awesome to get old anyways uh other than that podcast last week well two weeks ago uh actually coincidentally Spotify sent me a little thing saying, uh, hey, by the way, we are doing uh, now videos that you can put on your, uh, on Spotify. So I was like, okay, sure. And uh, yeah, so it should be on video and audio on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> ah. So pretty cool. I don't know what the quality of their video. I actually watch it a little bit. It's just, you know, it's just a regular thing. I don't. I think I still put the the chapter underneath, like I do for those videos. By the way, if you want to skip ahead to subject that are more interesting to you, then yeah, you can skip ahead. And um, I don't know if you can do that on Spotify. I have not tried it yet. Anyway, today I am painting. This gigantic Hogbuster, which I finally decided to prime and decided to paint with the little tiny guy inside the Hogbuster. <laughs> well, Iron Man inside the Hogbuster. So, yeah. Not too sure how I'm gonna paint that yet. What are you painting? That is tank. a tank. <laughs> yeah. Why is it gold? Uh, because it's going to be cherry red. Are you telling me that I should have painted this gold? If you're going for a cherry red, yeah. Because then you just glaze a red over the top and it's nice and it's a nice deep cherry yeah, red. Yeah, but I don't have anything that I could have airbrushed. Or spray can gold. So, yeah. Well, have you tried? <laughs> Liam's painted it Thousand Suns uh, armor mix. <laughs> All right, <laughs> cool. What is it then? Um, see, what you do is you get an old um, jar and you tip an entire new tub of contrast medium in and then you tip an entire new tub of contrast flesh cherries red in and then you shake. Okay, cool. And then you don't have to worry about getting the mix right for thinning your contrast paint down when you're doing an entire tank. Cool. I was thinking maybe going with my inks, which I am trying to find. So I have, yeah, I have Game Ink Red, so, and then a Game Ink Yellow, which I might try on, on those. I don't know. I will see <laughs> how things go, but yeah. Um... Yeah, so shout outs. Let's see. Not that many this week. I think we just, uh, last week, the two weeks ago, was just like tons of them past milestones. So, well, you go ahead, I go ahead. What do you uh, want to do? So, is... I've got, I've got Mineral Eater on 300 days. I've got Arkin underscore plays on an entire year. Cool. I've got Archon Drakazar on 400. I've got Hobby Streak Miniatures huh? on 30. It's a nice round month. Oh, and it's a nice and name, got... so, yeah. <laughs> and I've got uh, Rogue Geographer on 800. 
and there's a, a couple of guys on um, the Discord for my hobby club who have started doing a hobby streak as well. So cool. I think Roger's up to two weeks and uh, has inspired a lot of people to, to pick that up and do that. So shout out to uh, the Lost people. Legion. Yeah. For, go, go, for following go. and doing, doing, doing the whole, doing the old hobby streaking. Nice. All right. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. That's a picture. That's kind of the picture I'm looking for. Those are the droid you're looking. Oh no, no, he's not a droid. It's a just giant robot. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to paint this stuff, but anyways. All right, cool. Well, over uh, on Twitter, over on Twitter, we have Secretly Paul, which is on two hundred days. We have John O. Spencer on one thousand six hundred days, and Norm Nonford, Nonford, Nondorf, the Norm Nondo, on one thousand six hundred days. Also, so kudos to them. They're big numbers too. Uh, the paint. Bunting, which is on 100 days, and Dr. Toomer, which is on 400 days. Yeah, pretty cool. Well done. Okay, right. So, kudos to everyone. Uh, again, not a competition. You do you. Just as long as you're having fun and as long as you're making progress on your hobby is kind of what we're looking for, right? That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Man, that right that red is bright. Uh, let's see. Ooh, ink. Do I wanna use a synthetic brush maybe for ink? I don't know actually. Are ink bad? I don't think they are red. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be no but I mean they shouldn't be bad for like brushes. Let's try. Uh, so, what, what have you done in the last past two, two weeks? weeks? Yeah. So last week, I was at an event. Again, cool. So I took a three and a bit hour drive up north to uh, Element Games in Stockport. So, um, the Hobby Room was hosting a two-day Age of Sigmar tournament cool. mid-week. That's... So, the idea there was to make, event that was, make an event that was accessible for people who work weekends. Okay, cool. That's nice. So, That's nice of them. There was 24 players. Well, I'm sure some people took just the day off, right? Yeah, I mean, I work, I have days off on Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, Wednesday and Sunday, sorry. So I was going to need to take a day off for it because if, 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 it was Tuesday, Wednesday. So I had to take a day off for, for that, but I'd have had to have taken the same amount of days off to go to a weekender. So Yeah, yeah. It's easier for me to get time off midweek because there's less people competing for that day off. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense, yeah. So yeah, I cool. I went up, uh played some very fun games of uh, Age of Sigma. I won two and I lost, I lost three. three. Yeah, two or three. That's what I saw. Cool. Uh, though, very close. Th those those losses were a lot closer than the the scorecard suggested. There was only a couple of dice rolls in it either way. Yeah, cool. For for all of those, so I am happy with the decisions that I made. The choices. 
that were taken because oh, okay. I would uh, that's good I'd rather be upset at losing because the dice didn't go my way than if I lost because of something that I did because mm -hmm. I can't control the dice but I can control me yeah for sure cool All so right. apart from that um, I finished building a second unit of Vindictors so I've been picking at them at various points over the last two weeks and just finished them off um, I stripped some old Inquisitor models so when we had our show about scales way back well, when yeah that was a while back I got my old Inquisitor models out and I finally got round to, to stripping them so they don't have uh, 15 year old Liam's crappy paint job on anymore oh cool so they're going back on the pile and I'll get round to them to the when I get round to them oh cool Oh, so, so you just you just stripped that, it. You didn't like actually repainted it. You just stripped it. No, I've just stripped them so far. There, there's well, there's a couple of bits that need like a little bit of extra go over with the the paint stripper, mm. like, right in the, the the nooks and crannies and stuff. Cool. So them to do. Um, while I was away. I took uh, my Aeronautica Imperialis planes with me so I could do a bit of hotel hobby. So nice. those had been primed previously. So I got all of the windows and all the yellow bits on them done. So I just need to find some really thin masking tape. So oh, I to can do, do the hazard stripes. Cool. And yeah, there's a couple of little detail bits on there, but mm -hmm. I'm doing them up to be like a, a smaller version of the um, like the 28 mil ones that I've got. So I went up to the hotel without any reference pictures. Oh. So, <laughs> oops. Well, you got you can always look it up on the phone, and yeah. yeah. And sure I've know. got most of the way through the rest of uh, the tempestors that I've been painting recently, but I'm getting a bit aggravated with them, so I'm I'm switching up. Yeah, it happens sometimes. so that I don't, so that I don't just rage. <laughs> sometimes you just don't feel it on on the particular project you've got. You need to pick a different project up. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. And that's my excuse course. for having so many projects on the go at once. <laughs> well, I got a few too, so it's okay. I understand. <laughs> And yourself, what have you been up to? Well, that's a good question. I need to actually look at my thing, because I don't... Well, uh, so I finally... Well, I got the resin for my board that I remember. So I uh, did the river. So that was fun. I had used the... Previously... I had used uh, the resin to do a diorama, but yeah, this time around I uh, actually did a river, and uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. Uh, good thing about the big 32 ounces one because I ended up using all of it. <laughs> so mental note: make river less less deep next time. That's for sure. Uh, so yeah, so that kind of was one of the big things that I did. 
And then after that, you know, like you put the Mod Podge on the top to make the wavy thingies and like the kind of show the current and all this. So I did that. I tried to do the waterfall using some caulk, but it just I bought one that said, and after I bought it, I realized. So hey, you put it white, and then it dries, but it dries clear within seven to fourteen days. And I was like, Ooh. seriously, dude? You couldn't just freaking put that in front of the thing? So they still look okay. I'm still happy. Uh, it, it's it's it is transparent now already. So it was less than seven days, but yeah, uh, probably took seven days. But yeah, that was I was kind of pissed off and stuff, and I'm like, seriously, you could not freaking say that on the box, like, anyways. So that was one of the big thing that I did. I started a new board also. Uh, right now it's just um, primed with the Mod Podge because it's a foam board. So primed with black Mod Podge. And it's got the uh, the sand, the grout thing on it. That's about it. And it's a much smaller board. It's only a uh, 22 by 30, which is like the kill team and uh, war cry size. Because the game two that I'm doing is what I want to use. I don't want to use something bigger than that. So. Which I worked on as well uh, on game two quite a bit. It's actually probably will be finished way before the other one because it's a lot quicker and it's a lot shorter. So hopefully I'll have something. Well, unless well, mm -hmm. that's the thing. So what I'm missing is someone who can draw and who can draw the do some illustrations basically because that's what I am gonna miss I cannot draw I cannot do anything like this so um, I'm gonna have to either pay someone or find someone who's willing to uh, work and share the, some of the profit I don't know <laughs> so if you know anyone who does illustrations who's willing to uh, work for money or work for a p piece of the pie just let me know <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I don't need much. I want. I just want one big illustration for the front cover, something that'll catch the eye, because that's kind of what you need uh, when you put it on like a place like uh, Drive Through RPG. Well, Drive Through Tabletop, I think it's uh, is the the version where you have all the tabletop rules. So that's kind of where I want to put it. So yeah, if you have a nice cover, then people will see it and people will uh, just look more into it. My wife might actually do the the first page. I don't know. Uh, she doesn't really do illustrations. She does actual painting and stuff like that. So not sure. Uh, again, if you are interested, just reach out to me on Twitter and uh, DM me and we can talk I know exactly what I want I know exactly how I want it presented uh, the problem is I mean I don't I suck at art the only thing that I can do is paint mini that's about as far as my uh, artistic uh, price go <laughs> so yeah uh, so anyways, uh, on top of that, I, for the game also, started doing a health damage counter, and I kind of went down the rabbit hole, <laughs> uh, because so I started with the rotary dial thing, but those work well if they are, um, if they are made out of acrylic and laser cut. Which is not the case for me. I do not have a laser cutter. So I tried to make those in 3D printing and that did not work well. Even in resin, they just look funky. Uh, so yeah. So then I started doing something else. Blah, 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 blah. Iteration, 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 iteration. <laughs> printing, 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 fell print, fell print, crappy print, crappy result, not anything, dip, blah, blah, blah. 
So I did a whole bunch of those until I finally got to what I wanted. Uh, to the point where a lot of people say, oh, it's so cool, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up putting it for a sale on my uh, Etsy thing. So yeah, if uh, if you want it, go to my Twitter profile. It's there. The link is there. So yeah. yeah there was I, uh, one, one, one of the guys I played yeah. last week had uh, some similar stuff. For his um, big stumpy dinosaurs. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's not it's not anything like new or anything. It's just like no. my take on it, and uh, entirely designed by me. I just um, and I don't know if uh, I just got those guys for it, which is, it's not even open because uh, I basically made it so that. On each side, there is a magnet. If I can open, this. What the hell, people? Why would you do this? You put the. It's childproof, right? Oh, sure. So yeah, so I bought some because basically you can put a uh, two mil, ten, ten mil, two thick, two millimeter thick magnet on each side of the dial so that it locks into place and you can turn the dial and and the magnet gives it some weight also and they are printed in resin so they actually are a night they have a nice weight to them um i had 10 millimeters one millimeter magnets so i put two on each side and then i'm like yeah i need to just buy the two millimeter ones so that's what i did uh, while doing that, I realized that I had a tiny hole in my, uh, in my, uh, FEP film on my printer. So I needed to change that. I changed it and realized that one of my screw head was stripped. And so I could like, it took me 10 minutes to remove it. It was a pain. Uh, I got to the point where I was so frustrated. I'm like, I'm just gonna take the freaking Dremel and I'm gonna make a gash in it so I can use a flathead screwdriver to freaking remove it. Like, this is how bad it got. Like, I tried so many different freaking heads and sh stuff and I was like, ah, oh, piece it. And then I actually ended up moving the two pieces together just to loosen it and then I managed to get it out. But I was like, yeah. So I got some new ones. They're coming in tomorrow. And so, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I prepared those two guys, Mr. Hulk Bostor, for today. And that's about it. What color do you use? Flesh Terror Red or Blood Angel? I use Flesh Terror Red. Let me try. I'm not happy with... You mix it, though, right? For um, like a standard Space Marine, no. But for a tank where there's going to be lots of large flat panels, yes. Is that better or not? That is the question. Is that better? Oh, that is way too thick. No, I need to thin it. Yeah. All right, I might actually just strip this completely. Shit. Ah! Well, let's do Mini Buster then. Where is Mini Buster? Let me try Mini Buster then. I'm sorry. It's just not... It's not working the way I want. So I will make my little mix and I will try that again. Uh, so yeah, so... Yeah, lots of lots of 3D. Uh, I mean, like I, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna do a counter, and I thought it was gonna take me no time at all, and then it just mm. snowballed. <laughs> it's it's it quite snowballed into yeah, it into madness. I spent way too many hours doing this stuff, but yeah, it it's again really happy with the results, and uh, it is really what I wanted. The one that I put online actually has, uh, like, 
20 different faces and things. So I've put like wound, wounds, health point, wound counter, health counter, and then I put a skull, uh, four scratches, a blood dripping on the side of the dial, and a blank one. So, and then there's a blank blank with nothing written on it. So you can use like you can use those for whatever you want. Like you can print whatever you want. Uh, if people are listening to this and interested, and they want something specific on it, just let me know. I'll make a new one. Not a problem. It's a uh, it's a process, yes, but it's not too bad. So I'll uh, I'll gladly put anything specific that you want on that. Not a problem. And if you have a graphic also that you want, then let me know. And I can work with that as well. Nice. So yeah. Shoes. Oh, that's not good. I am putting red in my... Uh, in my medium. That's not good. So yeah. Uh, so there is... Uh, you wanted to go through you actually have the topic for the week we'll do my yeah. little new things for after the after we go through the topic so what's up <laughs> please let us know so while I was uh, doing some painting the other day I was watching a uh, a recording of a, a YouTube stream for um, Outside Extra, and they do something called uh, Luke's Luke and Ellen's Soul Souls Academy, where um, Ellen gets to play through a Dark Souls game for the first time, and Luke sort of coaches her through it. Okay. And she's doing really well, but uh, they've recently uh, unlocked a specific area that you need to do like a load of tasks to do to get to. Okay. So she was like, "Oh, can we go here? Can we go here then?" Now it's like, "No, nope. that's your dessert. You need to eat your vegetables first. So they've gone and done. A load of bosses on like the main path, so that that had me thinking. It was like for people who do big army projects, or even even like if you do like single single miniatures, like how much of the basic stuff should you do before you let yourself have? A nice model to do or do you do something similar when you paint like you mean like you you will do like five grunts and then you make a captain because the captain and yeah. you spend more time on the captain because it looks a lot cooler or do yes. you or something do you that, yeah. yeah or do you go like two or ten or twenty or do you do all of them and then finish by Huh. Or you go, ah, oh, I've I've got all these these special units and these special characters and these tanks and all that. I'm gonna do those because they're cool. And then all your basic stuff is just grey. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So I have not. Well, I've not painted a lot of army type. Uh, well, armies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's so I think for you, the the, clo the closest stuff that you really do is like your like your, your um, silver bayonet stuff. Yeah, but silver bayonet—that's the thing. Silver bayonet. The I painted the entire uh, unit in one go. Yeah, and they're all can they? There is no. I mean, there is an officer. But he's not that special, <laughs> mm. you know what I mean? Like he's just—I uh, don't, you know—I don't consider 
him super special compared to the rest. He's just one of the troops. He just has different um, capacity and, and, and abilities that the other ones don't. Now, the other one that would be closest would be uh, Frostgrave. Because Frostgrave, mm -hmm. there is a lot of grunts uh, that are worth nothing. They're the mercenary and they are completely um, expendable. <laughs> you can, you can, uh, like, yeah, they just don't matter. But your main character actually does, like the, the, the wizard and your apprentice matter a lot more. And last time I did this, I actually ended up painting the apprentice first. The right. the wizard and the apprentice first, and then I tackled all the grunts in one big try to do a painted them all together. So yeah, so uh, you had all your dessert, and then you went back. And then I went house. back, yeah, and then I created more guys, which I have, and I have not painted yet, like more wizard, because I realized that if I wanted to play with, like I can do a solo play. But if I want to play with someone, I will need to get it. Uh, probably, I need to paint a lot more then. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good. I don't know how I would do it. Like if I was to. If if I had like an army, like a big army. <sighs> I don't know. It 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 really depends on you. I think it it will really depends on your mood. Um, sometimes you don't feel like painting well, and by by that I mean like you know like making sure you're like spending two hours on or three hours on one model. Sometimes you don't feel like doing that, which is completely understandable. And and then you just yeah. what you want to do is just, and, and and then it's like oh let me paint. 20 pair of boots and 20 hats and 20 whatever because it, it's all the same colors so i think that's kind of where i would be <laughs> it would be like okay let me let me do all this let me you know like it, it it would depend on my mood if and if i feel like painting something nice then that's what i would do now if i need to because i have a tournament coming I think that you should start with the grunts and well you should first of all you should start with your uh, paint sc scheme scheme or whatever you want to call it and you you need to know what how you want to paint them and then you should go through the the little guys because you will get used to that paint that color and everything and once you've painted, you know, let's say you need 20 guys. I would say never paint 20 guys at one time because it's way too many. I think the limit should be something around like five is a good number. Um, I would go with five. Uh, then you do those five. You do the big guy. You do another five. You do another big guy and so on and so forth. And, and by the end, when you get to one of the main character the biggest one you're so used to your paint uh to your palette that you chose for your specific army or specific yeah specific army unit whatever you want to call it depending on the games then that gives you that at the end the last guy that you paint you're just so used to it that you're just gonna make some so much of a better job i think So yeah, that's kind of what I would do. Yeah. So how many guys do you paint usually before you switch to the big guy? Um, normally, I, I don't tend to have that kind of attitude okay. towards going this, then this, then this, then this, then this. So... When I started doing the streak, the stuff I started on was 
uh, some mortar, a mortar team. So they, excuse me, they're not like the the main bit on the plate, mm -hmm. but they're not the dessert. They're like the side dish that the spice that gives gives the the main dish a little bit of extra juice. Okay, it's the technical term. <laughs> so yeah. With the with the Stormcast stuff. Again I didn't really divide it that way because I was doing stuff as the magazine sent it to me. Yeah, true. Well, so how did the magazine do it? How did they send it? Did they send like all the all the grunts and then at the end only the big guy or once in a while you would get a big so guy? So the the last four or five issues were the um like the centerpiece models for for each side mm -hmm. yeah which so was, they, they yeah, sent so, you so, they yeah. sent you the big stuff last the end, yeah but they sprinkled like heroes and units throughout yeah no, and I think that's what you should do for your own stuff. Like you yeah. should sprinkle once in a while. You, yeah. you just so like, I I think if I was going to start like uh, another force like tomorrow, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to do, but if I was gonna, um, or Shit. when when the new Heresy box set comes out, and I inevitably accidentally trip and buy that, I think I would. Um, isn't it? Isn't there bucks coming in? That's gonna be like four hundred bucks soon, or is it three hundred bucks? There's there's not been a price confirmed for it yet. Okay. Yeah, that that's that's a different topic for for later <laughs> on. Yeah. So the, I think what I would do was I would do the core of the army first. Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of army games have, like, a a barrier of entry of, like, a you must have this many things to, to play a game. So, for, like, a, for Horus Heresy, it's you need to have a HQ and two troops choices. Mm -hmm. For a, a 2000 point Age of Sigmar game, you need to have one hero and three battle line. So, you work out what the basic stuff is. Virginia, yeah. The, the very basic stuff that you need to get an actual game going and you do that first mm -hmm. and then well, when yeah, you've got again, that like built you, you when said, you've got you that said. built and painted if you've got the other stuff built but not necessarily painted play that at the same time so you've got all your, your toys on the table and then Pick pick one that did particularly well in your game, and get that painted up for the next session. Reward reward your your unpainted miniature for performing well on the field of battle <laughs> by giving it a decent paint job yeah. or a paint job. It doesn't have to be decent. Get stuff painted. It just looks better. Now, and then repeat. You're you're like you were saying. Yeah, you you core your core unit well you call you call units that you need in there there will be some uh there will be some like just grunt basic troops yeah. and then there will be still be some commanders or captains or whatever they called in in that specific game and so you should still i think you should still like split those not yeah not paint everything in one go and just like be like hey just let me paint well figure out what you need and then if you need 20 guys and three and and three main dudes then paint 10 paint a good one paint 10 and then paint a good one and then yeah. you can paint the last one again like after and 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 have like that or you can do five five ten or you can but you just try to split it so you get that Hey, I'm gonna paint a good model and have fun. And yeah, like if you've got experience painting and stuff, then you know 
how many you can do at once yeah. when you're batch painting stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. speaking as somebody who's batch painted a hundred models in a batch, Ugh. don't no. recommend it. No. Yeah. Already, I did uh, my well, my frost grave, I did, and they're not even all the same. It was a weird batch painting where it was, uh, you know, where you paint the pants on one guy, the hat on the other guy, the boots on the other guy, the yeah. whatever, one color. Then you go back and you paint this and this and this and this and this, one another color. And then you go back and, you, and that's kind of what I did. And I do not recommend it for that many models that I did. I think I did 20 I models. Mean, and no. <laughs> I did... 50 at a go for the Ugh, nope. um, Zinch Horrors. And that wasn't too bad because um, for the, the Brimstone Horrors that was basically get them all set up in like a block. Yeah. Pick one up, glaze it, put it down. Pick one up, glaze it, put it down. Yeah. And by the time I've got to the end, the glaze on the first ones have dried. And then that was just dry brushes. So that wasn't too bad. Yeah. But when when I moved on to the bigger horrors, that was not fun. So <laughs> Yeah, pretty I, sure. I think I, I can I can batch paint in tens, I think, is before I start losing the will to I move. would say ten if they're the same, five if they're different and you're doing piecemeal on yeah. each guy. And even that <sighs> Like, if I were going to do those today, I would probably just... Uh, I batch, uh, batch painted last time when I was on stream uh, the the Revenant. But I ended up almost making like a full one and then switching and almost making the other one. And kind of like this. So, And I think that's okay if you want to do it this way. And yeah. Oh, is that's not gonna work? I am trying to remove the the paint that I've put onto my model without removing the airbrushed silver that I put, and it's almost working because I'm pretty happy with this guy. Look at that! Look at that! Nice and nice and cherry. <laughs> See, if you just do yeah, just do, do what I tell you today. You'll be fine. Yeah, it work. It worked great. Now I'll go back and do all the details in uh, in gold and whatever in all the the other colors. But yeah, um, I went just all out on the on just the color, and that worked really well. And now I'm trying to uh, remove the ink on this guy. Yeah. So I can do the same, but I am removing a little bit of the... Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for it. I might actually do some airbrushing on the uh, live on the... <laughs> live on the... On the... On the stream for requoting the pieces. Hashtag that live but not live. Live but not live, yeah. True. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah it's... Uh, yeah, it's a good problem to have, I think. Yeah, if you're, but like you said, you need to, you need to know where you're going. Like, uh... mm. oh, I know who I. Well, the easiest guys that I batch batch painted, and actually my kids did most of it, and I'm gonna have to uh, redo it, redo them. But were uh, stormtroopers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh, stormtroopers well they're kind of easy to do like really uh, you start with uh, prime them white then contrast uh, apocary, apocary white then black templar in the places where it's supposed to be black uh, dry brush white on top so that the white parts are actually nice and white 
And uh, yeah, you're done. <laughs> so yep. those are the easiest one I think that I've ha I have that are to batch paint. I have the uh, uh, what's their names? Uh, the the rubbles, and I think those also can be pretty easily batch paint because you're gonna do the same camouflage kind of things. But yeah. You yeah you need to, you really need to have a plan as to how you want to paint those guys and I think that after that yeah don't go too crazy on the number of models have fun once in a while painting one of the main yeah. not I'm not saying main character but like at least uh one of the you know captain or whatever. How is uh yeah. some, some sometimes you need to motivate yourself how's to Horus... slog through a basic unit. Yeah, how's our seriously like how's the how's the formation like of a of a unit? You have like grunts and then a captain or something like that? So you're you're well if we look to the, the launch box, there is uh, a captain for each side. Mm-hmm. Or, or a Praetor is, is the, the technical term. And there's two units of ten tactical squad, tactical marines per side. So there's a total of 40 bog standard. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Total of 40 bog standard uh, marines in. Uh, there's a unit of five um, terminators. Mm hmm. There's the new plastic contemptor dreadnought, and there's a tank. Yeah. So that, in and of itself, under the current rules, is a pretty standard and substa. Yeah, it's a fairly substantial uh, army. Yeah, I was going to say. Under the current yeah, edition, a... it, it's it's got. How many points is that? Uh. Is it is thousand it... thousand one and a half thousands? I think. What? Two thousand? One and a half. Okay. Yeah, so you're close to what you if, would if you need. put like upgrades and and stuff on everything. Then Oh like oh uh, you can put like cards and well like equipment to get them to Yeah yeah. So like okay. your your stand your standard um ten man tactical squads is something like 150 200 points and you can go what right, every man has got an additional close combat weapon and that's plus two points per model uh the sergeant can have artificer armor so he gets a better armor save plus 10 points he can have a melter bomb plus five points he can have a power sword plus five points times yeah. four and etc 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 so there's a couple of different uh, options for the gun on the Contemptor. So, yeah, that's it's, it. It's a very basic, mm -hmm. like army selection. It's got like no flavor to it, but it will form the core, a nice core for for most. Space Marine Legions, so cool. that's, that's why it's basic stuff. Alright. That that is that is basically all your meat and potatoes. Alright. I am gonna make some noise. I am gonna prime. Live on the stream. Well on the podcast. Hopefully. Live not live. Hopefully. Come on. Why are you not? There we go. Hopefully it's not Ooh. It's it's. Is it making a lot of noise? I don't mean to alarm you, buddy, but it is making a lot of noise. Shit, no, it's, yeah, and it's not. Ah! No, 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 no. You guys, yeah, you need to dry because you're still full of. Uh, you're still full of alcohol. Ah, well, it's gonna wait a little bit, but then I, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I need to re 
prime this guy. I cannot paint anything before I reprime this guy. There's no point because I'm gonna just reprime it all. Well, let me do my what I want to do. Kind of a new segment, and I'm gonna we're gonna yeah. have a. It's we, highlighted in orange and highlight, everything. Yeah, it, everything. Yeah, you see. Um. So yeah, let's see <laughs> if we can get this to work. All right, I need to make sure that this is on the right page. Yes, it is. Then I need to go uh, there, share screen, and I need to share that screen. And here we go. So now you should be seeing my screen. Ooh. Do you see my screen? Let, let's let's make that slightly bigger. All right. So, uh, this kind of like a little thing that I want to do is uh, shoot. No, here we go. Is uh, kind of look at some games that are not necessarily that mainstream and uh, some stuff that we talk about and we can have like this uh, kind of a live reaction and you guys can actually see what we see. So, yay. What I wanted to talk to you. Well, and to all, well, to everyone, uh, today was Lunar. And Lunar is from uh, Black Sight Studio, as you can see on the top. We talked about this. It's basically a um, skirmish game, Lunar Superiority, Russia, but USSR, like in the 70s, USA, USSR, Republic of China. There's some independent guys also that they've added to it. But the main thing is Russians arrived on the moon first and then since then they've been fighting to between the Americans and um, and the Russians uh, to for for resources on the moon basically. Uh, what they have done is they done a core set which is right here as you can see. Uh, two player starter set where you have basically everything that you need to play. Like everything else, all the extension, expansion and everything, it's all additional fluff that you can uh, that you can use. But this is all you need. Like you have the rule books, you have the seven core mission. Uh, you even have the PDF of the core rule book, which I think is cool because sometimes you don't want to carry all the books in. Anyways, uh, the token sheet that you can see there, so all the tokens and everything. The unit cards, 15 for the USSR and 15 for the USA. The weapon cards and item cards. And then five multi-part USA astronaut, five multi-part USSR. Well, technically cosmonaut, not astronauts, but uh, multiple uh, units, weapons and parts so that you can customize them the way you want. Four D6 dice, which have the special, uh, uh, which are not just regular dice, but then they have like two custom lunar hazard dice, which are the reps that you do in your suit um, if well, if you go through that. Now, you can buy the stuff separate. There is also a gaming mat that you can buy. It's a two by two, so they've made it It's super small, and it's, it, it's like I said, it, it looks super fun. Now, let's see the guys, if we can... There we go. Let's look at the Lunar NASA astronaut. And I think their sculpts are really nice. And they come in like look at the packs they come in. Oh, it's kind of like it's kind of like food. Yeah, exactly. So I mean like you know, you know like they're they look nice. They they they're pretty details like you know, it's like a guy, one is go holding a rock, one is got like a sonic, uh, I think it's a sonic uh, driver, and like, I don't even, like, that's a net gun, he's got a shotgun, and he's got, uh, I have no idea, probably a drill or something, and uh, yeah, they're, you see, like, they come in multiple, multiple parts, you can customize them, they have different, like, weapons and types of things, and so yeah, you can really, like you have the five basic bodies and then you can just customize the rest the way you want. So I think, that, like I said, I think they've made a, you know, like they've made a pretty good little kit. 
the core again the core is is all you need it's 80 bucks and you can just go ahead and play especially like it's the moon you don't need much you have rocks and you can really literally go outside pick up a freaking rock and put it in the middle of the table and that's all you need like some of them they require like some some of the uh what's it called uh, scenarios have you know pieces of resource you know like this is resource markers for example like you you have like different resources that you can get but again like you probably have tons of freaking markers that you have for other games sci-fi or whatever you have crates you have things you can put those instead like it doesn't really matter um now there is a uh, the core units are the soviet and cosmonauts and the nasa astronauts now after that they did the freelance faction and they did the uh, taiko notes so the freelance are you know like they their their suit and everything looks different but it's still the same principle you can have like uh, and they have their own cards and all this so you can expand your your own stuff and then you got the taiko notes which again are the same thing like their suit are completely different I don't know why it's all like they have frills <laughs> on, their, on their thing I have no idea uh, maybe they actually are like this I don't know but yeah so and you have like special cards and stuff for each of them again like I think they're really cool they made a lot of things like this you you have a little boogie i guess like it's like an atv uh for for the lunar atv like the the russians have uh what looks like a freaking amphibious vehicle and then you got the rover the lunar boogie for the for the usa um you have like rovers on main rovers you have terrain so terrain like you have you know craters and and debris in the craters you have like some base kind of things that you can put you have griblies and details like you have a moon base a full moon base that you can put on you you got like mining scaffolding they've really pushed like it it's really nice and they are releasing and it's not on there yet because they're releasing it friday they will release a uh, crate uh, of like the the lander for the Russians new minis that are to play like new rules and new minis to play inside lunar bases and spaceship mm. so the guys don't have their helmets and everything on and there's new mechanics which I'm gonna like the, a lot of the mechanics in that game are gravity and weight actual like how many <laughs> how many kg you are kind of things like are you heavier than the other guy because you shoot him but you're gonna move back because you're shooting a freaking shotgun on almost zero well very low gravity and he's gonna get hit by a beanbag but he's gonna fly out if he's you know if he's eight then you need to roll higher so that he will actually fly out but if it's five he will probably fly out and then hit something and then rip his suit and all this so the the whole lot of the mechanics is actually based on like weight difference and it's the same thing when they grapple when they shove each other push each other try to you know put people on the ground and things like this so great game uh, really 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 interested <laughs> in picking it up and I am saving my money on the side uh, to probably this is gonna be the next game that I will purchase so yeah and when I do I'll definitely uh, show you guys but yeah so what do you think yeah they yeah. look, they, they, they look pretty I mean, good. Yeah, and it, and it's like the the whole thing was it's so easy to freaking play because you have a two by two, you take a freaking um, spray can gray and you spray can that two feet by two feet piece of cardboard, you have your moon surface, yep. <laughs> like literally. 
right? and then you pick up like i said you pick up a couple of rocks outside you put them on there I'm, or i'm sure like people do have rocks and and you know sci-fi building can be a moon base who cares you know it doesn't have to be but yeah it's 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 super the, the point of entry of this game is really low like 80 bucks you have everything you need after that you know if you have a 3d printer like i do you can probably find craters and things like this that you can print. You can find the, the actual lunar rover uh, that were the lunar buggy buggy that was used by the NASA astronaut. I'm pretty sure you can find an STL of that if you want to print it yourself. I mean, it's just yeah, it's uh, it's fairly easy to to get in. So yeah, so that was our first uh, first look. Let's let's just call it first look. <laughs> There we go. So, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Let me go back to my face now, if I can find the right window. And uh, yeah, so while we uh, were dealing with recording issues, I primed in this guy black again. I am gonna cut a little bit again because I'm gonna prime him silver now. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, yeah. Then we can go on to the news. Just give me a second. Seriously? Never mind. I put some. Ah, come on. I hope it's not gonna be too bad. But, anyways. Back to silver! Yay! Cool. So I've <laughs> got... Where is it? It's buried under here. I've got these. Okay. So What are those? I don't know. You probably can't see those against my face. Oh, oh. Uh, come there, there. Are they helmets? They're no, shoulder they pads. Shoulder pads, yeah. So I hold them up to the, the camera, top camera as well. So when I was planning um, my Thousand Suns, I was mm -hmm. like, well, what's going to be better, Blood Angels Red or Flesh Terrors Red, over silver oh, so or over gold? So I got four, uh, clipped four shoulder pads that I wasn't using off the sprue. Just went. And then, yeah. And then test silver, silver, gold, gold. Let them dry and went right. Which one do I like best? Painted a little bit of silver on the sides, on the silver row. Bit of gold on the side on the gold row. And wrote a BA on the top on the top of one, and uh, an FT on the top of the other column. And and just went. Another one. And so that's how you got to your, to decide. And I'm sorry I'm making noise, but I really need to clean my airbrush. Or for people who have an airbrush, they know that if you leave paint inside, then bad things happen. Light. Oh yeah. Then you spend hours removing everything, putting everything in the sonic cleaner, and just bad times, really bad times. <laughs> so yeah. Well. So yeah, so again, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna do something like this, you need to have your uh, your things sorted. Come on, yeah. All right. Well, I've talked about this for the three D printing, um, where when I did my DAO, I did a lot of iterations, and so you should too. And uh, Caleb was uh, he was like, oh man, I wish I could like, like do this and. I was like, dude, like, 
I don't understand. Like, people, you, if you have a 3D printer, just that's the whole point of the thing. You design something, you print it. You know, if you design a big part, print the small piece first, like if you want to see if they fit together and all this. But print doesn't work, fine. Iterate, change, modify, print again. Now it works, but it looks ugly, it's not at all what you wanted. Change it, do it again, and so on and so forth. It took me, yeah, it took probably 20 something hours of printing, but at the end I got exactly what I wanted and I'm super pleased with it. But it's definitely not what I started with. And so, yeah, if you have a 3D printer, and even if you don't have any actual skills in 3D, just try it. Look for tutorials online and have fun. All right. My news. So, uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Those guys, yay. Uh, they are releasing a card pack. So, I've talked about that a while, a little bit, a little while ago, where they were doing a whole bunch of um, modification to the cards. They were going to be portrait instead of uh, landscape instead of portraits. They were gonna modify a lot of the characteristic on some of the, on like 20 of the models or something like that. Um, and you could download them for free and you still can, but they actually now came out with a pack with all this and the tactic cards and some um, gem cards also. So all the updated cards that they've done that you can download for free and print yourself, you can actually go and buy the pack and it's 20 bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the other thing that they have is the Quinjet, and they've just announced Black Swan and Super Giant. They are the next two characters coming up after the um, all the minions that they had with Elektra and the Hand Ninjas and Shadow. What's his name? Shadow Daredevil. And uh, Fury and the Shield crew. Now, um, you know that I like Stargate. Uh, Stargate. Well, I do like Stargate, but uh, Stargrave and Frostgrave and all these things. Well, Stargrave just got an expansion, which is the Last Prospector. North Star's military figures. They came out with Crew Two, which I have. Which one is that? That's Trooper. Well, so it's kind of like this. You have a box with 20 models. Um, the crew ones are only eight, I believe. So you have an eight box. <laughs> Siri decided to uh, talk, but. So you can get uh, eight models. You got eight bodies, and then you can put heads and stuff. So they came up with the second ver. The second version of that for the last prospector like they actually I think they were they already had it in the works and and since they're very close to uh to Joe McCullough and they probably it was like well I'm gonna release an expansion so you might want to release that at the same time so they released that pretty cool Mantic games so I've discovered firefight well, with the second edition, it's not something that I was looking at before at all. The models look pretty cool. It looks like a nice starter box that you can get for the second edition. So definitely something that people might want to look into. So yeah. Um, yeah, they, they have a nice vehicle. If I can get the... In the... There we go. Hey, hey, come here, come here. I want to try to go to, to the page. They have a nice, uh, they have two like vehicles, one on each side. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it looks like a fun game. I like the, they have the military, uh, I don't know if you can, do, 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 do. where is, where are the pictures? View gallery, here we go. So they have, those so one side they have like orcs they they're different but they're orcs 
And on the other side, they have those weird guys that kind of look like, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, but they're, they're a mix of humans and uh, maybe those, uh, those uh, Eldar, I think. So they're kind of like a mix of that. They they're very inspired. Let's just put it that way by those. Okay. Yeah. I have I have not looked at it's nothing nothing to do with the fact that half the Mantic crew used to work for Games Workshop. Oh no no absolutely not no no it's complete coincidence <laughs> that the green guys actually look like orcs. Like, I mean they yeah. are space orcs really aren't they? They 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 are yes. Well they yeah but they're legally distinct they they're an orc with the q <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> uh but yeah so no it, it, it looks like a it looks like a cool box um i like i said i have not looked a, a, yet and at uh at the rules themselves and and some gameplay it looks like a lot of figures so i don't think that's going to be something that i'm going to be very Found off, but they again they, they they had some cool models and so I thought it was news worthy, and it's been talked quite Do you a like lot. cool models. Yes, <laughs> but they it, it's they they've talked about it quite a lot. Uh, I've seen it a few places uh, around the internet, the interweb, and uh, yeah. So and then we have uh, some of my favorite people, which I still have not pull the trigger on any of their STLs, but I definitely, like this would be, so I'm talking about NVL Industry, they've released the digital Alien Bounty Hunters, and if you are playing Stargrave, then yeah, you might want to pick this up, because you have a whole bunch of aliens, um, you have a kit with a bunch of heads and bodies and stuff, and a bunch of aliens that you and weapons and I'm pretty sure you can use all of them into uh, into your game so really cool some very uh, Star Wars the inspired guys yeah that that guy on the top right is totally not a Wampa no 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 he's got a gun yeah exactly <laughs> Wampas don't use guns you see you see so he's not at all no, what are you talking about <laughs> and those guys with the tentacle thing it, it, they're not yeah no <laughs> they're not Cal you know <laughs> so what is it calmari mon calamari mon, Cal mon calamari yeah no not at all they just kind of have the, the no but it's they're not no but i mean like yeah it, it, it they look they look cool i, I always like their stuff and then the other one that they have, which you liked when I posted it, is the Ogre Mech Suit. <laughs> that one looks freaking... That one looks cool. Uh, those are actually um, resin, and you actually choose your mini. So when mm -hmm. you buy it, it's only one, but you, sh you, you have arm posing choice, shooting neutral, weapon choice, you can get the heavy ghost gun or the minigun and then you can choose the leg position which is static advancing crouching so yeah main armor arm pose yeah weapon choice like yeah. yeah so you can you can like yeah you you basically you choose how you want to build your mini and then you have some extras if you want a storage pack jump pack and if you want the base, or if you want a plain base, or 50 millimeter, 40 millimeter, if you want to, if you want to use your own base, you don't have to buy the base. So basically, like you're buying the pieces that you want to build the thing that you want. So yeah, and there's one with the canopy open. There is a so torso choice, heavy armor, reckon armor. So that's the one with the open canopies, the Recon, Recon armor. Then shooting on neutral and what. But anyway, so you choose the one that you want. And, and 
I, you see, that's the kind of thing that I'm hoping they will, they would release in STL because that would just an STL pack like this with like all the different position, like postures and everything. They have a few on STLs, but yeah, I really like this stuff. I really need to one day buy some of their um, STLs. So yeah, that's, I believe that is my news unless I had something else on there, but I don't think so. That was it. Yeah, well, the lunar thing. Well, you can see the people that, uh, the lunar that what I was talking about on the document, which is the mm. lunar uh, lander, Russian lunar lander, and then the people that are floating about and don't have either no helmets or actually no spacesuit because they are inside a uh, hull of a spaceship or a indoors Base. where the space yes. isn't exactly and then it's called hull bridge so i'm guessing <laughs> there will be some mechanics where the, the hole space is now inside and now you're all dead <laughs> so yeah i'm pretty sure they're gonna pull something like this but yeah it's uh like i said it i like it oh shit did i just delete yep i just delete the picture no here you go it's back so i like this stuff i really want to get a try it out but yeah there you go cool now on to your news mister um tomorrow from today tomorrow is made of force why are they doing a tomorrow it's... from today which is not tomorrow from when you will be hearing this dear listeners um well so yeah you you should already know what's up <laughs> by so the time you're watching this warhammer fest online again so we're we're not back to having an in person Warhammer Fest just yet. Just yet, yeah. So we have four days of online reveals on twitch.tv slash Warhammer. Uh so tomorrow, Wednesday, is forty K, Thursday is Age of Sigma, Friday is Skirmish Day, so it's Kill Team, Warcry and Necromunda. And then Saturday to coincide with the uh, the open day that they're having at Warhammer World, is Warhammer the Horus Heresy reveals. Hey, finally. So they, when they they do these things, they have in the past put um, a picture up with a load of banners across the top. Mm -hmm. So not this same. Yes. They have this time, yes. That, that's it's in that's the still. document. I am looking at it right now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All the okay, all the banners on the top, yeah, yeah. So from left to right, you've got the the Imperial Fists banner. Because okay. Imperial Fists are one of the choice the uh, the the factions that they've painted up the um, one of the sides for in the Horus Heresy box. Uh, and okay. next to that, you have the standard uh, Necromunda flag. Okay. Next to that something vaguely imperial looking for 40k so okay. that might be given that it's in the dark blue and orange that's normally mm -hmm. the colours they use for kill team so I think that might be something like um, stormtroopers for kill team Maybe, oh, yeah. possibly. Next what do you to mean that, by stormtroopers? Uh, so there's the Astra Militarum faction, the Imperial Guard, and they and have, have actually they're actually called stormtroopers. Uh, Tempestus Scions <laughs> is what they're. But they the, look. But do they look like stormtroopers? Is that what you're calling them, stormtroopers? Uh, they 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 were called stormtroopers in an age past. Okay. Where we didn't have to have uh, legally distinct IP names for everything. <laughs> well, if they released them on... To, uh, they, they were called Stormtroopers, then they were called Kazakin, and now they're called Tempestus Scions. Okay. Uh, next to that, there's a Sylvaneth banner. So that's probably going to be one of the new Order battle times for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, next to that is uh, a banner... That looks very clean and fresh and new. So I'm assuming that that little box is for the Leagues of Votan. So the new squats. 
Oh, the, yeah, the dwarf, space dwarfs. Space dwarfs. Next to that is a chaos thing. So I'm guessing that's going to be that's for the... Age of Sigma. Okay. Uh, there's something else chaosy to the right of that. That's Horus Heresy, no? I don't know. Is there any chaos in Horus Heresy? Yes. Okay. There's the standard kill team logo next to that. There's the uh, Eye of Horus logo next to that. So that's the other faction that they've, they've painted stuff up for for the Horus Heresy box sets. So that's Sons of Horus. Uh, that's the standard Warhammer TV banner. That's a Chaos Space Marine head. So there's probably going to be some Chaos Space Marine announcements. That's another Silver Neff banner. I thought the Silver... Is that the Sylvanish? The, that's the cow people? Sylvaneth no. are the tree elves. Okay, so what, which one are the... They released recently uh, for uh, Age of Sigmar, no? Some cow people. Uh, well, recently, elves probably, with... six mon probably six months ago, but yeah. El elves with cow hats. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in the Lumineth Realm Lords. Lumineth. There we go. That's the one. I and the, the, last, the last banner they've got there is... is Definitely a League is a Votan thing, which confirms that the other one is a League of Votan thing. So, I think for Wednesday, we're expecting a lot of um, stuff about the, the Leagues of Votan and um, some upcoming codexes for 40k. For Thursday, for Age of Sigma, we're expecting the roadmap to get revealed a little bit further. Okay. There's more on that we'll get to in a minute. As I published an updated roadmap this week, this week as well. Okay. Uh, cool. Friday for skirmish day. Um. Yeah, next couple of um. The next kill team box, some more stuff for uh, Ash Wastes expansions. Yep. And yeah. either the next Warcry box or some. Expecting a lot of vehicles for that. The new because they have a lot of rules apparently. Yeah. In the, or some Warcry warbands. And in the Necromunda, they have a lot of rules for mm. big vehicles, but there is yeah. nothing in the box. So. And Saturday on Horus Heresy Day, they they're, they're just gonna talk us through the the new box. Um, they they'll probably tell us what what we're getting in terms of books. So, like the the main rule book, uh, the traitor book, the lawless book, and then beyond that, uh, hopefully, uh, a look at what resin kits are going to be coming in plastic, which will be nice. So okay. like, the root the rumors is that all the like the mainline legion stuff is going to be plastic, and then all the the specialists upgrade packs to turn stuff from basic legion into your legion of choice and all the, the special units mm -hmm. and stuff will be resin upgrade kits is the rumor so okay. we'll find out how far that goes on saturday morning uh beyond that there is the aos leaks so over the weekend a whole bunch of stuff leaked. Okay. So they've got the the link here for uh, Slaves to Darkness new Battle Time and Demon Prince unveiled. So they um, a whole bunch of stuff from the new Slaves to Darkness Battle Time ended up on the internet. So there was the oh. contents page and um, the Demon Prince rules and I. I think that was it. So who lost? Uh, who lost uh, their right to uh, ever get any uh, new stuff from? Uh... Uh, probably, <laughs> probably the printers, because this was a printed book. Oh, so, so it's not, not play even test sent rolls. to someone. It's not even sent to someone, and then someone leaks yeah. it. It's just it's actually from the printer. Because like the the next picture I've got down on the news is the Battle Time roadmap for 2022. <laughs> And you may yeah. notice, dear viewers, if JG's put this up on the screen, oh, really? that on the left-hand side, I need to look at it, too. it says spring, and then summer and autumn, 
they've got placeholder covers because they don't want to reveal what it is yet. And then winter, they've got Slave to Darkness. So this isn't even the next... In the next six battle times. This is like battle time seven. Okay. So this is miles away that this is this is coming out. Okay. So yep, this is the new the the roadmap as well. So with, this is probably going to get uh, filled in a little bit on Thursday. So we know that the Night Haunt and Dorts of Cain books are coming next. Speaking of the Nighthorn book, all the match play rules and allegiance abilities and war scrolls for the Nighthorn, new Nighthorn book mysteriously ended up online. Jeez. So that's not even up for pre-order yet, so that's not even going to be like the, the, the influencer copies. Yeah, yeah. So... So it's really... So Somebody's they're new uh getting fired. Yeah. I'm guessing they're gonna change uh printing company pretty quickly. Yep. <laughs> uh yeah. You cannot uh you cannot manage your employees and we don't have, you know, like shit being released all over the place. Yeah, you're not uh, printing the, for the, us the, anymore. The daughters of Kane groups are like Where, where's our leaks? We wanna know what our rules are. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that so yeah. this summer we're getting a chaos battle time and an order battle time uh, smarter people than me have worked out that that's probably going to be Skaven and Sylvan there and okay. then over the autumn we've got order, chaos, destruction, destruction which could be anything at this point and then winter we've got the, the new Slaves to Darkness which was had bits leaked from so yeah games workshop is is looking incredibly leaky at the moment well they they changed printers everybody knows it like yeah. they didn't they never said it but they did because this is why they had issues with uh core city mm -hmm. is their printer not the physical thing that you use to print paper, but the actual people printing their the company printing all the shit up in China, all the card books and uh, you know all that stuff. Either they went under because of COVID, or something happened. And well, th since since it all happened during COVID, I'm guessing it might be COVID related. Mm. Our government, our government, you know, because China. Uh, or so, our government. <laughs> I mean, yeah, our government some, are also or, idiots. Or something happened, and you know, like they had to cut down on the cost because, well, because of all the taxes on stuff that, if it's more than sixty percent, blah blah blah, that you have in the UK now, then you need to tax it and all this. So that did not help and so they had to change printers and since then like you said they've been very leaky so this is why i'm thinking that it just reinforces the fact that they changed printer because that is not something that we used to see we used to see leaks from um from people getting copies more than things like this yeah. so there had been some don't get me wrong but not to this level i mean like she yeah, just I mean, said like, all the, like all the heresy stuff yeah. that we've seen is got playtest rules, like, splattered across yeah, the yeah. page. So that's, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a that's, playtester. That's, has, that's a playtester, yeah, yeah. They, they've shared that to an untru with an untrustworthy friend, and the untrustworthy friends put it on the internet. So. Yeah, don't. Do not do that. That is how you lose access to all the fun things. Yeah, so NDAs are there for a reason. And yes, you have friends. Make them sign an NDA. It doesn't matter. It's just... By the way, when you're when I'm going to send you the playtesting of my games, I will send you an NDA, dude. <laughs> this is just standard practices. It doesn't have anything to do with like... 
it's just like you know what <laughs> i'm i'm going to go on a rant and i and i freaking need to go but i'm going to go on a rant this is the thing that happened when we got married with my wife oh, the, we, yeah i was about to say i, I didn't I didn't know we were married no. <laughs> we did a print up and everyone went crazy saying why are you doing a print up where's the love blah blah blah, 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 blah. We did a prenup. The prenup has nothing to do with us. It is like we've put down rules that if we have kids and shit hit the fan and we get separated, the kids will be looked after. No matter what we decide, no matter how bad we got it got between us, if we have a house, they stay in the house. Whoever stays in the house has the kid. This is like it, and all those rules are in there. It's non-negotiable. Like this, and this is what we've done. And everybody was like, "Oh man, why are you doing a prenup?" Blah blah blah. Of all the people that told us you're stupid to do a prenup, four of them are divorced now, and their divorce was fucking nightmare because they didn't have a prenup, because they didn't have a contract that says this is how it's going to be split. This is what's going to happen with the kids. And it just was a nightmare. And we did a prenup, and we're still together. So, <laughs> so here we go. It doesn't matter. It's not because you have a contract that shit goes to you know like that. That it means that you don't trust the people or that shit will hit the fan. No. It just means that you're make sure that you cover everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I've heard it so many times. Like, Why are you doing a prenup? No, 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 no. Yeah, well, we did. And right now, we never used it. And a lot of people that didn't wish they had. Because they would have used it. <laughs> so, yeah. it, Yeah. It's not funny for them. I'm sorry that their, you know, mm. their, their marriage went to crap. But if they had a prenup, it didn't matter how bad they would have, you know, this is this is the thing. It doesn't matter how bad it gets, and it doesn't matter if you blah blah blah. If you have a contract and it's written, then your feelings don't matter. And this is where feelings and and emotions run high. So get a contract, and then you have no issues, because then you can scream and pout and bang your feet together as much as you want and do all this and it does not matter because the law the law will say this is how it is because that's what you writ that's what you was written so yeah anyways rant over rant <laughs> over uh, so yeah but yeah those people are there it just don't don't do that if you have the the, the <clears throat> if you're lucky enough to be one of the chosen to play a freaking like I'm sure that if if Mr. Liam was one of those playtester, he wouldn't even freaking tell us because he would be like, hell no, I am keeping that to myself and because I want to keep playing yep. the advanced rules of Horus Heresy. I would I would have to tell one other person so I could test a game with them. But, <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't even they be will doing never that get a copy. They that, will never get a yeah. copy of, of anything. That, that they be will just have to sit That'd be happening yeah. in my kitchen on my table. Yeah. So yeah, you don't do you don't same thing. You don't look you you don't go to a club to play those kind of things. Because then someone walks by and just take a freaking pictures of the thing and then ends up on yeah. the internet. And the Probably the copy has your water specific watermark to yeah, specific it, it, people. It, it, it would say Liam Durr playtest copy, and then like that. yeah, yeah. So, you see, GW, if you're listening, he can do it, no problem. It'll never leak anything. I wouldn't even know about it. So, yeah. Well, not cool. really happy about right. this guy. So that sucks. How are we doing? Bad. Bad. Yeah. Don't. Is it I... just not happening today? It happened on little dude. Worked fine. And I'll. But big dude just 
looks like crap. The the contrast paint doesn't work. It's too. The the panels are too big. Even your technique mixing half and half with the medium doesn't. Oh fuck! Because I use Lormian medium, not contrast medium. Yeah, that might you be, yeah. fucking stupid. Ah! Anyways, uh, I think I will actually. No, 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 no. It's fine. Um, I am gonna strip this dude. I don't know if he fits in my ultrasonic cleaner shoes. I will see. Uh, he might actually go dunk in the resin bath. Uh where there's the 91 proof alcohol and just go in there and uh and and sit in there for a while it's gonna be full of resin residue but then i'll wash it it's not a problem and i will prime it black maybe brown actually i don't know if i have some brown i might have some brown i might actually brown silver and then i will use the contrast paint in the airbrush and just all red and then I will come back with gold and stuff and blue and all this to do everything like all the little pieces and everything but I think that's what I'm gonna do because I just don't I know that through the airbrush contrast paint are like a filter yeah like they they work not at all like they work for this so yeah so it's, um the, the recipe that a lot of people use for uh, a really pretty and shiny looking cherry red is um, Tamiya clear red over gold. Yeah. Yeah, the Tamiya, yeah, they, those work well. Um, but, but yeah. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So, no, no. Th this is me cheating that by using Flesh Terror's red over a, a gold spray. But I've... Yeah, it's just I don't. It's not still like, not tried it on the tank yet. So it's it's blotchy. It it's it is blotchy. It's not. I think I can get a way better result by airbrushing it. Hmm. I, I will use the same contrast paint, but airbrushing it should do the trick. So, anyways, yeah, that's um, that's where I'm at. So, how's your tank going? What did so you do? So what I've done is I've blacked out all the bits that are going to be uh, silver. Okay. So I've not done any of the red yet because what I'm going to be doing is replacing some of the, the tracks. Mm -hmm. So um, on the, the, the Imperial tank kits, at least for the Space Marines, every 13th track section yeah. is stylized to look like the double-headed eagle okay and this is where i go super turbo nerd on you <laughs> the double-headed eagle wasn't a thing during the horus heresy oh yeah unless you were in the emperor of mankind's personal household or specifically permitted by the emperor of mankind to use that so what I've done is I've poked my brother, who has a little 3D printer, and I've gone, hey, the Thousand Sons on some of their chest armor have like um, a scarab with big wings on, like a, a big cartouche uh -huh. across, their, yeah. across their chest. Is there any chance you could do some sort of really basic version of that? Print me a couple of those out. And I can stick them on my tank instead of the, the eagle. And he went, oh, cool. hmm, that sounds interesting. So I'm not going to do the red armor paneling on that uh -huh. until I've replaced the tracks. Because I want the tracks to be silver. So that means I need to rebase them with black. And I don't want to get the black mm -hmm. on or the silver on the gold that yeah. I've painted red because yeah. then I'd have yeah. to rebase and then reglaze with yeah. my yeah. my painted glaze mixture. <laughs> nice. Alright. So there's so, an order of operations. So yeah, I'm doing did all that tonight because if I pick up a, a, a dragon 
cavalry man, I might scream and throw him out the window. So, yeah, no, I, I, I this, was. This is yeah, this um, is a, I, a, a, a this is this starting work on this today was for my sanity. <laughs> well, and this is why, like I, uh... my big stupid golden brick. <laughs> I got the new arm for people who have yeah. noticed, um, and it's awesome. And I can, yeah, I think. I will be assembling the diorama. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, uh, here we go. Hold seriously. I know I saw it. What is that one? So th this this is my dessert. <laughs> yeah. So this is. Uh, see. If, show you there. Oh. Cool. Make this the red. So let nice. let me just show you how many pieces this man is. Oh yeah, there's a few. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. So, no, but that's gonna be fun to assemble. You know. Oh it's, yeah. It's, it, it's the same. Like, this is what I was saying. Like, I, I, it's, I am it's, very it's kind of like your Dormammu as well. In that, um, there is a, the, the Primarchs have like a display base, and a gaming base uh, set within yeah, that. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is kind of what I um, want to do next, and and I need uh, to do your a rivals. video about that. Rivals pack. Yeah, yeah. rivals pack. Yes. So that's probably if if uh, if I have the time this week and I have an hour, <laughs> at least an hour, I might just uh, maybe Saturday or Sunday I might just uh, pull the trigger and uh, and do a video about it and and just assemble it just to have fun. I'm disappointed with today, so. I will need something to. Some days it just don't work it, out, does it? He worked awesome on this guy. Like, oh shit. And, well, there's a few spots that I miss, but that's it. Still worked really well on this guy, so I'm happy about that. But on the big guy, it just does not work. So yeah, he's gonna go in the bath and uh, get all his paint removed. All right. Well. Thanks a lot again, everybody. Uh, please like, subscribe, all the social thingies, and um, join the Discord. Tell your friends, and um, yeah. Tweet me. Tell me how wrong I was about my Warhammer Fest predictions. <laughs> you guys are fun. May the force be with you tomorrow. So when you watch this, is will already be <laughs> ready. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah. Um, Keep hobbying, keep having fun, keep doing the hobby streak, and uh, yeah. Don't forget to connect with us and to with the hobby streakers. It's on its own uh, Twitter account as well. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Bye, everyone.